Hi, my name's Armstrong, and welcome to the back office teardown lab. Today, we're going to be tearing down these Polaroid speakers. And you're going, why? Why? You like those speakers? Well, the reason I'm tearing them down is because I do like these speakers, but I don't like how they's treating me. They're not treating me the right. So what I'm doing is I'm going to modify these. And I'm going to tell you while I'm while I'm discombobulating them, why I'm modifying them. And the reason is that it's got a weird behavior that it kind of took me a while to figure out what was going on and it's taken me a bit of expense because I tried to work around it. So basically when I'm playing sound, it's all good under the hood. And then what will happen is, um, you know, I'll go off and do something else and I'll sort of do something else that uses sound and then there'll be like a, no sound. And then there'll be a big pop, bloop, and then sound plays. And I thought, okay, this is something to do with my sound card. There's something weird going on here because I migrated to this from a USB speaker. So I didn't really ever use the analog speaker on the PC. So I, I kind of blame that, but it's the speaker that's doing it. And what it's doing is it's going into standby mode. So after like X seconds of no sound, it's just going, okay, I'm going to go into standby mode now. And then when it's in standby mode, obviously then it takes several seconds to sort of fire up. Like it's listening. It's going, okay, is there any sound? Is there any sound? Oh, there's some sound. Fire up and then do it. And that's a problem with some of these things which are a bit too fancy for their own good with all these bass and whatnots on there. It means they've got a chip that's on there that's it's got like uh, all these different modes. And then when the uh, manufacturer is making this, they go, oh yeah, man, that's totally cool to incorporate energy saving technologies. But they don't really ever think about the use case for this because if you're using it for your PC, you want it kind of there ready all the time because even when Windows just occasionally just goes ding, you know, to alert you, you'll never hear that. You, and you don't hear that. It's just frustrating, man. So it's just crazy annoying. And imagine when I'm um, editing a video as well or something. That's really annoying. I mean, I, I said 10 seconds. It's not, it's not even 10 seconds. It's more like just instantaneous it goes off. Right. So we've got this weird toilet tube. I do like this toilet tube technology. It's just interesting to see how these are made. And there's a sort of seal that goes around there. So there is the ooh, speaker out wire, and that's pretty much kind of all we got to disconnect right now. We want to get to that panel that's in there, basically. So if I take this off, and it was stuck in. Good. Uh, you can hear me audibly groaning. So I've got to get in there and undo these uh, four screws. So yeah, I'm just going to plop this out the front, basically. And my idea is, if we can figure out what chipset it is, we can figure out how to circumvent this. Now, if you want a way of circumventing this without resorting to butchery, um, and I, I understand it's not only this speakers that do it, there are quite a few brands on the market that have this annoying feature. I put a feature in inverted commas. Um, I'm guessing the feature is because they maybe think that you're going to use it for your iPod or something rather than just uh, your computer is um, you can tell your PC to play a continuous tone, basically. You can create a, a massive WAV file that just is on loop or find some sort of software that generates tones. And you can play a really low frequency tone, like, I don't know, two kilohertz or something that the humans can't hear. And certainly these speakers will be filtering it out. It will never even get to the speaker, but it will be enough for its onboard circuitry to go, oh, there's a tone playing, dude. And it'll just keep um, keep it on. Right, so let's see if we can retrieve these screws. I'm going to retrieve the screws though before doing anything, because there's a magnet in there, and the likelihood they're going to jump onto that woofer speaker. Get out of it. So I've undone the four screws. I mean, that looks to me like all you should have to do. Have they glued it as well? Are they that thorough? I mean, this is pretty well bloody built if they have. I mean, shockingly, shockingly well built for something that cost, I don't know, what did it cost? Was it ten or something? I'll have to watch my own YouTube videos to figure that one out. Ugh, come on. They would never have glued this, would they? Nope. It's just the construction. It's got basically four holes. You saw the screws are, are sort of going in four holes and then the, the big cutaway. I mean, it's it's quite a precise thing, really. I'm going to try to push it out with my fingers. Wow. That is some force, I'm telling you. I know you can't see force, but you can maybe just see this starting to deflect. I mean, I'm going to need to get me a slide hammer, I think. 
one last thing I'm going to try is I'm going to put the screwdriver over the little screw hole thing like a little ferrule and poke it out nope okay I think we're gonna have to jump cut this one okay sneaky sneaky oh trying not to mess it up too much I'm just forcing a screwdriver under the edge I mean that's pretty much that schoolboy that is but it works it is having the effect though of sort of denting the uh, sort of vinyl on there here's a trick by the way if you want to restore the edge you see I'm just rubbing that up just rub it on the edge and there you go reformed edge One more, come on. Oh, I think we broke that last one. That's fine though. You don't need it. But what we will do, because we have broken that though, now's a good opportunity, just poke it through. There you go. So it's not gonna get in the way. So I'm just gonna unplug the couple of connectors. And these, these are really well glued in. Ah, that one came with the socket. Let's pop the socket back off. You gotta watch those. Oh no! Pin headers with sockets, guys. Make sure the sockets don't go with it. There we go. Last one. He says, hopefully, yes. Good. We'll get rid of that. Do 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 do. Let's have a look. Let's see what we can see. And I actually have a new rig, by the way, but it's a standard def rig. Um, that lets me zoom in even a bit tighter than this. I'm just going to tilt this around. So we've got to find the amp basically, and I'm just reading the chips on here. So here we have an M8877E TGG418, whatever that is, an M6208E chip, and we've got an anonymous chip right here. And then we have a 4558D. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this AMP 06015 main board and have a little route around on here just to see if I could uh, see what's making that thing turn off. And just here, look, you can see it's quite nicely labelled up though. Ground 9 volts, left N, left P right p right n oh neutral positive neutral positive left and right and then at the end it's just got ground right and left and then here i'm guessing that's just the subwoofer speaker there so nice and simple let's see though i'll get back to you momentarily okay here is a very very weird thing so i went on the internet and tried to figure out what these chips were doing i can only identify one which is sort of an op amp that's sort of controlling the volume so i thought i'd hook it up my phone's just here um playing some sounds i could just sort of have a tinker with it and i was tinkering with it so i could hear some sounds and i noticed when i was sort of waving my screwdriver around here sometimes the sound would play and then sometimes it'd go off it'd do that weird on off thing i was telling you about so I've got a uh, voltmeter set up to the left of me. It's part of my bench power supply. But when I turn it on now, I'm getting an overcurrent protection. Remember, this is a two amp supply. So whatever it is now, it's just not even coming on. So I'm just sort of putting my fingers around here just to see what's going on. And it's getting warm around this chip for sure. But even my bench power supply is starting to whine. I mean, it's, it's really um, taking out something. So. I don't know if it was just a component that was sort of on its way out and now I've sort of exasperated it by killing it, but I may have destroyed, I may have destroyed my uh, speaker. So we're going to see if I can come up with a better solution. <laughs> and uh, frankly, I don't think I'll miss these things. So I don't mind having dummy controls on there. To be honest, even the volume I'm not that bothered about, but yeah that sucks in fact actually i leave this on maximum volume i don't really need this panel at all do i let me have a little head scratchy session and see what we can do with this right my solution like anything is to use a baby boomer 
as on my website. <laughs> so replace the amplifier, which is this, all this stuff, all this gubbins for these with this little tiny thing that probably good enough for what I need. So <laughs> you can see I didn't bother spending too much time investigating the issue. So we've got some simple wiring to do now. Unfortunately, the unit itself, the speaker unit, did come with some quite clear things and also it's five volts need to sort of remember that a bit because it does come with a slightly juicier rated power supply but i think baby boomers are pretty good up to 12 volts um depending on your heat dissipation so be, be alarmed be alarmed be warned and alarmed to be honest with you so i'm just gonna now put some uh solder blobs on here so it's easier to hook up for me God, I can hear an awful lot of bloody noise. I think that's uh, some crazy hoovering going. I don't know what's going on right now. Everybody seems to be doing this spring cleaning. We've had that long sort of summer so far before the summer has even started. And uh, now everybody's bored of that. They're like, okay, let's just get back and do normal, normal jobs. So okay. the whole neighborhood's a buzz with DIY. So hooking this up should be pretty straightforward because we've got exactly the same inputs and outputs here. So this is the inputs and I'm just trimming them off, off screen, but I'm going to show you them momentarily after I just trim them down. I could zoom out, of course, but I don't want to make you feel seasick with all this zooming in and out. So we've got left and right. I'm going to go with black being left. It often is. And then I'm going to go with red being right. Because if you're not right, you're wrong. And this speaker setup actually is quite easy because you've got these two desktop speakers. You can just sh shuffle them around, just swap them around if they're the wrong way around. There we go, so that's those. And interestingly enough though, this does have a subwoofer of course, and we don't really want to lose our subwoofer capability. So at some point, I'm going to have to discover how to make a low pass filter. That probably is not going to be today but it will be at some point in the distant future. Right, so I have the ground or the negative here. Is that rain I hear? No, we've had balmy weather. I can't believe it's raining. I refuse to believe it's raining now. I've got some jobs I could be doing now. Right, just the last four vias and basically right negative right positive left positive left negative so right negative right positive and that's kind of convenient because that will hook to those two so i've got to, I've got to invest in blue tack i think that would be a good investment for me but not today again not today put that on that list of things to buy next time i'm in maplin which doesn't exist anymore i mean that's the downside isn't it and, you know, to be fair, actually, I never went to Maplin. But maybe I might. But now I'll never, I'll never be able to go. Right, uh, left positive and left negative. So we've got the last two more wires. And this cable is getting a bit bunched up. Bunched up like a pair of knickers on a hot, sweaty summer's day in Britain. One more. Come on. I'm doing quite a lot of finger gymnastics, by the way, to get this all in place but it's done you can see why it was under stress because i've basically taken a ribbon and gone bifurcated it so that's our amplifier in place and i'm just uh let me get my phone out i think we should test this we've got the wire the fire wire the wire it comes with i'm gonna splug that in and i don't know what i was uh watching on youtube but it's uh uh, how to solder using three different types of soldering iron. Should we try that? I have never listened to, to Tam, Tampatech. Tampatech. Let's turn on our amplifier. Ready? Go. Portable, rechargeable soldering iron. I love this thing. I just grab it and solder quick and I'm ready to solder. This is Oh, he's soldering everything. I'm not sure I agree with all that soldering. Come on, guys. It's soldering, not soldering soldering right that's how you know it's working that's good though i prefer that buzzy buzziness because it means that it's not turning off because we don't want that anymore 
So the question we have to ask ourselves is, after we've of course hot glue this somewhere there, which will be fine, is how are we going to do our low pass filter for the base unit and do we want to do it in a, a special way? So one, I'm going to have to read up on low pass filters, but I believe you can create a simple one out of an inductor and a capacitor. And look, we have a whole load of inductors here. So we could try popping off some of these inductors. In fact, what's that thing? That's a big old inductor, I think. I think some of these, ooh, actually, I'm just looking because it's very near. That's the speaker, if you recall. That was the um, woofer speaker port that came off when we didn't want it to. Maybe, just maybe, that will show us what inductors were hooked onto that. Get off. And there we go. And yes, yes sure Barb. Hooked to those two inductors. So theoretically, theoretically, we could make our own. Let me investigate. Yeah! Okay, let's stop that. <laughs> it sounds better than it did as factory, I have to say. It does sound better than it did as factory, although it is a little bit muddy because my filter is not great. But you can see I've made some bits and bobs using what was in this panel. So that's cool. So I've used two amplifiers. I thought this should have its own amp just because it's going to be a bit more juicy that way. It's going to have a juicier demand. So uh, I'm going to now pop this all back in the box. The only thing left to figure out now is how to fill in this all. I'm not sure yet I'm going to do that. Hmm. A nice hot glue gasket, that's what you want. Ah, got some on my fingers, damn it, hot. Oops. Ah. Yeah, that could have been better. Still, we'll just fill up those little holes. Fill these up. Oh, this is so quality. Perfect. Till I find something to stick over the front to hide that, I think that'll do nicely. I could see a nice sticker here. Back off his sticker, perhaps? Maybe. Right, just going to solder in while that's cooling. I'll solder that woofer back in. I cheated a bit. Couldn't be bothered to dismantle it on the uh, complicated end, so I just took the speaker out. Put that back in. That should be that. There is, they say, is that. On off switch still works nicely. So one, it's got a lot of screws actually. One, two, three, six at least. actually knocked off my soldering iron. That's always a risky move. 
as we know, once you turn off your soldering iron, inevitably that's when you will need it the most. Interestingly enough though, I wonder how many amps this will consume now. It sounds louder, I'll put it that way, it sounds a lot louder than it did. <laughs> For the final test, plug in the power, it is on. So I'm going to put it, set it up as if it's pointing at me like it's on the desk. So it's using 35 milliamps at 5 volts at the moment. We're going to play our Yakim Karud Rock Angel from the Free Music Library. <laughs> Nice. That is awesome. I tell you what it's doing, right? So at regular voltages, it's using about 300 milliamps. And then when the bass is kicking in, and I'm turning the volume up, you can see the uh, bench power supply basically maxing out at two amps. So <laughs> yeah, it's putting out a bit of sound power. But no, I think it sounds really good. I mean. It's nice, of course, to have stuff adjustable and lose, you losing your adjustability might be a, a negative, but hey, a working speaker over a non-working speaker is always, always good. And for me, I tend to use headphones a lot because I tend to just mainly play games when I'm streaming. So streaming or video editing and video editing, I don't really um, need to check the quality of the sound too much or mess with the bass. I just want to hear exactly how it's coming out. So I'll, I'll normally never... Li touch the bass or treble controls anyway. Occasionally I use volume controls, but I kind of think I tend to use the ones on the keyboard or within Windows itself. So uh, no loss there. So there we go. I mean, I could have just taken these back to the shop. But I like. I think this is a nice little solution. It does give me the opportunity, of course, to uh, do something to my own cabinet. So ideas down below, please, uh, on what I should use to fill this little hole here. I was hoping maybe I'd have an old, you know, Nintendo cartridge to glue on there, but I don't. But have a thought. Uh, please come and chat with me in the Discord if you uh, are interested in this sort of project. There's a lot of really helpful people in the, the channel. And uh, we do uh, electronics projects and hardware projects and trying to fix old consoles and things. So there's something, oh no, there's something for everybody. We tend to set up a room for most things. And I'll see you there, as ever. <laughs> Now my unbranded speakers, thank you for watching.